Merciful Servant boasts about being the world's largest Muslim channel. The channel does two things exceptionally well. One, it convinces Muslims to mass flag videos that criticize Muhammad and the Quran. Two, it convinces Muslims that Muhammad is God. As usual, Muslims are going to deny this. Also, as usual, I'm going to prove conclusively that I'm right. Here goes. Merciful Servant posted a video titled Prophet Muhammad, S-A-W, this stands for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a phrase usually translated as peace be upon him, but which actually means Allah's prayers be upon him and peace. Prophet Muhammad in the Bible, truth, uncove. Sadly, uncove is not a word. This video is meant to show that the Bible, the book that Muslims tell us has been thoroughly corrupted, contains a prophecy about Muhammad. And we're supposed to take this prophecy seriously, even though the Bible's been corrupted. Consistency at its finest. The prophecy that supposedly proves that Muhammad is a true prophet is found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this person as my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. According to Merciful Servant, verse 13 tells us that this special person will be a warrior. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Merciful Servant then tells his viewers that verse 13 is clearly a prophecy about Muhammad and not about Jesus. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Muslims in the comments section praised Allah for such a clear proof that Muhammad was a true prophet. Are the rest of you convinced yet? You know, when someone's making an argument about something that could affect your entire life and your eternal destiny, it's always a good idea to carefully examine the argument. And when it's a Muslim apologist making the argument, you really, really need to take a closer look. Because some of these guys will do just about anything to convince you that Muhammad was a prophet. Notice something peculiar about this graphic of Isaiah 42.13. According to Merciful Servant, the verse is about the special person who would be a warrior for God. But the subject has been removed and replaced with an ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot. You use an ellipsis when you intentionally omit some content. Normally, you omit this content because it's irrelevant to the point you're making. But you should never use an ellipsis to completely change the meaning of the text. If Merciful Servant is being truthful with his viewers, then when we go to the actual verse to see what's been removed, we're going to find that the subject is this special person who will somehow turn out to be Muhammad. However, if the subject of the verse is someone else entirely, and Merciful Servant deliberately removed the name in order to completely distort the meaning of the text, we can only conclude that he is attempting to deceive his viewers because he knows that they won't bother to fact check anything he's saying. Let's see what the verse actually says. I'll use the same translation that Merciful Servant uses. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. 
He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, Yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Um, who goes forth as a mighty man? A special person who turns out to be Muhammad? No, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Lord here is in all caps. When you're reading the Old Testament and you see Lord in all caps, the Hebrew word for Lord there is Yahweh. Yahweh is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of the universe. Yahweh is the God of the Bible. So what did Merciful Servant do in this video? He went to a verse that's about Yahweh. He took Yahweh out of the verse and replaced Yahweh with dot, dot, dot. Then he told his viewers who trust him to always tell them the truth that this verse is about the special person that God would send as a prophet. It's about Muhammad. You have to be a special kind of dishonest to do something like this. And your followers have to be a special kind of stupid to fall for it over and over and over again. Those of you who aren't Muslims are probably shocked that Muslim apologists could be so blasphemous and deceptive in their efforts to prove that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. You're probably thinking, how desperate can Muslim apologists be that they would remove the name of God from a verse and then try to convince people that the verse is about Muhammad? Oddly enough, most Muslim viewers won't be bothered by this in the slightest. As long as you're trying to exalt and glorify Muhammad, they just don't seem to care whether you're being honest or not. They don't even care if their apologists deify Muhammad. When Muslim apologists take a verse that's clearly and indisputably about Yahweh, and they deliberately remove Yahweh from the verse and then claim that the verse is about Muhammad, they're calling Muhammad God. And again, their viewers just don't seem to care. And this isn't the only place in the Bible where they try to replace Yahweh with Muhammad. Deuteronomy 33.2 is about God. Muslim apologists claim that it's about Muhammad, and their followers mindlessly believe them. Habakkuk 3.3 is about God. Muslim apologists claim that it's about Muhammad, and their followers mindlessly believe them. What I find absolutely amazing is that this is the religion that claims to be against shirk or associating partners with God. And yet the apologists of this religion are constantly deifying Muhammad and their followers just go along with it. Moreover, instead of getting angry at their apologists for trying to convince them that Muhammad is the God of the Bible, they'll get mad at me for exposing what their apologists are doing. They'll get mad at me for telling them what the verse actually says. They'll get mad at me for telling them the truth. David, Wood, how dare you prove that our apologists are liars who manipulate us into worshiping Muhammad? You know that we love the lies our apologists tell. What kind of monster would tell us the truth? We're going to chop your head off for this, David. What a silly, silly religion. Of course, when it comes to Muslim apologists lying in order to convince their gullible listeners that Muhammad is a true prophet, it only gets worse. If you'd like to see just how deceptive Muslim apologists can be, go ahead and watch the entire video about Muhammad in the Bible on Merciful Servant's channel. The link is in the description box. Watch it all, and then watch a response video by Islam Critiqued. The link to that is also in the description box. Watch both of those and you'll learn a valuable lesson about Islamic Dawah and the nature of Islam. Let me know what you conclude in the comments section. As for you Muslims who are watching, I'd like you to explain to me why, if your religion is the truth, it always has to be propped up with lies. I find that confusing. 